Well, good morning. Real quick little walk this morning before we head to the office. I wanted to talk to you about three lies of the new Bible versions. They came out with these new versions. I consider anything from 1881 on to be a new Bible version. Although there was a, another uh, version of the Bible that existed before the King James Bible. And that's the Dewey Reams, which came out in 1610. The King James came out in 1611. And ironically, the new versions that came out after 1881 line up with the Dewey Reams, the Jesuit Dewey Reams translation of 1610. Hmm, that's an interesting thing. Uh, and I have a video on th this channel to prove that. But there are three things that they, ways that they market these new versions um, that prove that they are based on lies and not on facts and that the Holy Spirit is not behind them. Lie number one is this new version, be it ESV, English Standard Version, New American Standard Version, NIV, New International Version, New King James Version. Um, all of these are supposedly an updating of the King James Bible, which is a complete lie. Okay, first and foremost, the King James Bible uh, went through several revisions from 1611 to 1769, and the newest edition of the um, you know, King, King James Bible, it had the different spelling changes as the English language itself was being finalized and everything. And it also had the change from Gothic font to Roman font, um, which is a little bit easier for us to read, newer spellings and things like that. Um, and of course there were some printing issues and whatever because everything was typeset. I have a whole video on that, 1611 or 1769. Um, you can see about that. Uh, the changes between the two are not that, that much. No doctrines were changed or anything else between the first printing of the King James Bible and the later printings. It was just refining it. Um, <clears throat> but these new versions in the late 1800s, or mid 1800s, I should say, um, they came out and they said, I think we should revise the King James Bible there at Cambridge and Oxford and whatever else, and, and uh, without getting into a whole huge story about it. And two very lost men, Brooke Foss Westcott and Fenton John Anthony Hort, uh, said they were on this revision committee and they actually introduced a whole new Greek text. A Greek text which comes from the Vatican and um, also from the uh, 19th century forgery text known as Sinaiticus, which was created by a Greek Orthodox priest named Constantine Simonides. So they came out with this lying text and they completely changed uh, the King James Bible and they called it the revised version of 1881. I have one in my collection at my office. I've showed it in different videos. I'm very well aware of it. I've read large parts of it. I also have a parallel AVRV from back in the early 1900s. So um, very big, large parallel Bible. So I'm not ignorantly just repeating things that I've heard. I have done the research myself. Um, <clears throat> but they say it's an updated King James Bible. Well, the problem with that is that uh, they didn't just stop with the revised version and then the American Standard Version in America in 1901. No, they went and they came out with another version and another version and another version and another version until basically over the next 100 years from 1881 up until the 1980s, well, we'll say to the year 2000, have a little bit more grace here for them, I guess. Um, they came out with over 200 new versions. Now, um, I don't think the King James Bible needed to be updated by 200 different versions. Uh, what really was going on there is they were trying to replace the King James Bible, not to update it, if you understand the issue. They uh, just continue to come out and say, this is an updating of the King James Bible. Not true. Okay, so that's lie number one. Lie number two, they say this uh, new translation, it's based on older and better manuscripts that didn't exist at the time that the, or they were, they existed, but they, the King James translators didn't have access to them. Um, that's not true. They lied again. Uh, first and foremost, uh, they didn't have access to the Sinaiticus manuscript because it wasn't created yet. Um, but they did have access to Vaticanus 
uh, Desiderius Erasmus that uh, made the first Greek Latin text from the um, Greek manuscripts later known as the Textus Receptus, which is the vast majority of Greek manuscripts. 99% of all extant manuscripts line up with the Textus Receptus. Only 1% line up with this corrupted text, uh, basically that comes from the Vatican, made under their supervision. Again, look at the my videos. I proved that. The Nestle's text says that, that it's made under the supervision of the Vatican. Um, but they did have access to this. And I mean, just logically think about it. If there's older and better manuscripts, wouldn't the King James translators been closer in time to those? <laughs> and why is it that the Dewey Reams uh, translation, which was being made at the same time as the King James Bible and was, was released one year earlier, why is it that they have these newer, these older and better manuscript readings in it? Why does it have those readings in it? Uh, say it that way. Hmm. King James translators didn't have access to this, these older and better manuscripts. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And they didn't use them. So that's another lie that the new version marketers will bring out trying to promote their new versions. And the third lie is that uh, this new version, ESV, NASV, NIV, TLV, all the different junk out there, this is easier to understand because modern people no longer speak like the King James Version. And yet I have demonstrated in other videos that oftentimes they will use a more archaic word in a new version than what the King James Bible uses. I remember the one, um, I think it was the NIV or something, King James Bible word, the one verse was captain and the NIV used satrap. <laughs> and they have just multiple examples of this where the new versions actually use a more difficult word, more of an archaic word than the King James Bible uses. Hmm. So as you see, they're lying again. And, uh, oh, well, you know, we have to have the Bible be relevant and it has to sound like the street language of the modern you know, people and why. Uh, why would you do that when Christianity itself is, could be called archaic? I mean, how many people are really practicing first century Christianity? Why do you have to, excuse me, why do you have to update the Bible to fit the concepts and things of modern man? It doesn't make any sense. So, and yes, if you're wondering, my t-shirt says, no Trinity, okay? Trinity is not a Bible word, nor is it a biblical doctrine. If you really study it, it's a very deep subject. Most people don't get it, it goes over their heads. But the word is Godhead in your King James Bible. And it's a completely different teaching than the Trinitarian nonsense that's out there. You can look at my videos on the Godhead doctrine. But my whole point is, the new version issue um, is all about replacing what God used. The godly men that worked hard, that literally lost their lives like William Tyndale, and they worked hard so that we could have the Bible in our language. Um, and God blessed and used the, those lines of Bibles. That did not continue on into the 19th century and then into the 20th century and now into the 21st century. Uh, chances are, some of you might be using one of these corrupted new versions, not even understanding where it came from. If you look at uh, verses like Acts 8, 37, Mark 9, 44, verse 4, and 46, uh, chapter 9, verse 44 and 46, um, the last uh, 12 verses, I think, in the book of Mark, um, and you'll look down at the footnotes and it says, not in the two oldest and best manuscripts. Uh, you're using a corrupted version. You are. Um, these verses do not appear in the two oldest and best manuscripts. They're not the oldest and they're not the best. They lied to you. Oh, well, I don't really understand the King James Bible. Well, that's a problem because the King James Bible understanding it is a spiritual matter. So if you can't understand it, uh, then that proves you're not saved. Just as plain and simple as that. Anyhow, I'm not talking about, oh, there's a verse. It doesn't, I don't really understand that. I'm saying if you are saying that you don't understand it, because it's too archaic or something like that, then that proves that you're lost. Uh, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2 talks about that. So, um, and another thing, the best way I can prove that the new versions are a complete and total failure is because there has been no revival. The King James Bible, um, when it was the Bible of choice for Christian people, revivals were happening. Major movements were happening. And all of a sudden, oh, we, we need to have easier to understand Bibles so that the masses, the lost people, need to be able to have a copy of God's Word that they can understand, which is completely contrary to Scripture. If you're trying to make the Bible into, into a language that lost people can understand, then you're literally going against the Scriptures. Hmm. The Scriptures are not for lost people. They are for the saved. That's an issue, isn't it? But uh, where's the revival at? Hmm? Oh, all these souls that will get saved and everything else and the great movement of God of bringing out the new versions in a way that's easier to understand. Okay, where's the revival? The promised revival. It's a falling away. You know why? Because people are using satanic perversions of God's word. That's why. Better think about that. And uh, today, what else has the uh, new version scam led to? It has led to people now doubting the scriptures. You ask the average Christian, do you believe your Bible's perfect? Well, probably not, it's just a translation. It's kind of a problem, isn't it? So you can tell me about Jesus and about heaven and how to be saved, you claim, but yet the authority for you making those statements, you doubt. How does that work? Um, and what do we have? Modern churches are based on emotion and experience. And they are. That's why you should leave them. Leave them instantly. There are no church buildings in the New Testament. Uh, get out of those places. Oh, but my friends are all there. And all my, I have such good experiences. And oh, it's so nice on Sunday morning when we have our worship team. Uh. Well, there's no basis in Scripture for it. Well, you know, who cares about Scripture? Okay, servant of the Antichrist. Antichrist uh, professing Christian. That's what you are, if you feel that way. So, uh, just a real quick video on this issue. Of course, it's very deep and whatever. And, you know, I realize most people that watch this are never going to listen to what I'm saying. They'll just go on with their, well, I studied the Greek. Oh, what's the Greek? The uh, sitting Atticus, you study that, the 19th century forgery um, brought out by Freemasons. Uh, you study that. Oh, well, <clears throat> no, the Nestle's text. Oh, uh, which edition? There's 28 now. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> no, I study the Textus Receptus. Oh, really? Which edition? <laughs> There's a lot of those as well. You know, uh, Erasmus, Stephanus, Biza, uh, the Elzever brothers. Um, what do you mean by the Textus Receptus? Hmm. See, it gets a little complicated. Well, I have a Greek uh, <clears throat> lexicon and, oh, you mean uh, Thayer, the Unitarian? Oh, um, yeah, well, my lectionary says certain words are defined certain ways and, and the King James translators don't follow that and, and whatever. Um, well, they had reasons for saying and translating their text the way that they wanted to. And uh, they were great scholars, 54 of them when it first started, 47 until the seven year time period was over and uh they were very brilliant men but not quite as brilliant as modern man because modern man has computers and we know so much more now <laughs> yeah um you better get a hold of the bible that god has used and that god has blessed the king james bible a long history of uh miraculous things happening and lives being changed and everything else but if you don't want to just go ahead and use your new version and um just be confused and, and uh, proclaim that you believe in Jesus and whatever else when you can provide no perfect authority to back that up. It's really up to you. Thank you very much for watching.